We're seeing increasing use of ballistic missiles in testing coming from North Korea, and we must continue to utterly condemn what is happening. It is a breach of international rules. It's a breach of that sense of security for the region. Uh, and so we stand with others in giving our condemnation. Yeah, our, our view is that uh, when it comes to the risk posed by testing and by the use of ballistic missiles, you are still seeing North Korea as one of those who continues to engage, uh, particularly in areas where you've seen others uh, absolutely commit to an end of such testing. Uh, so it is a risk, it's an identified risk, it's one that poses, of course, a significant threat to Japan. They continue to have our solidarity, but we've got to continue to work together as an international community uh, to demonstrate that this is just totally unacceptable in law and in practice. Prime Minister, what sorts of suggesting is, is increasingly likely in the US in this hot wave of COVID before the end of the year in New Zealand? They're recommending the extra Omicron doses as soon as possible. Is the government moving quickly enough on that? So, so two things. Um, we have modelled and have spoken before about the fact that we do expect uh, that there may be another lift in cases before the end of the year. Our modelling doesn't suggest it will be any larger than what we've already experienced in 2022. When it comes to the issue of boosters and who they are available for, uh, we follow clearly the judgment of clinicians and experts. So they're constantly assessing what they think is most appropriate for the New Zealand population. And as soon as they give us guidance to move, that's when we act. Uh, and here, this is when, again, we rely totally on the clinical judgment of our experts. So these aren't decisions for politicians. They're decisions for those who have expertise here. And if they tell us that they believe that that will be the most effective thing we can do for our population, then that's what we'll do. We have not received that advice. Uh, we have seen a number of different variants and subvariants, and, and that's not unexpected. But of course, really important that we continue to keep a surveillance regime uh, to ensure that we uh, understand and know as much as possible about what's happening offshore uh, and its likely movement. It, it is inevitable that when you see them occur offshore, that they are likely then to arrive in fairly short order around the globe. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they pose more risk, but we do need to keep constantly vigilant. Uh, we, uh, at this stage, have no plans around introducing uh, any change in restrictions. We anticipate there will continue to be sub-variants and variants um, of, uh, of COVID-19. Uh, at this stage, uh, nothing to suggest that our rules need to change to, to deal with those. Is this the maintenance regime that they've announced? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. So obviously with the City Rail Link development in full swing, uh, Kiwi Rail obviously moving to make sure that we've got the rest of the network up to scratch so that we can maximise the benefits of the City Rail Link. Uh, of course, what we need to make sure is that it minimises the disruption as much as possible. So I know that there's a lot of work being done to make sure that we do see replacement bus services and as little disruption as possible, but so we're ready to see the full benefit of that City Rail Link once it comes on stream. Uh, look, you can see we've had some of the most significant investments into Kiri Rail uh, in years. Uh, and that's because we are rebuilding and reinvesting into our rail network. This is maintenance that needs to be done, though, and to make sure that we don't see closures just at the point when we are ready to run at full strength uh, and to provide a network that gets uh, ultimately more cars off the road. Is there, is there a candidate in the Auckland mayoral race who you are Yes, I'll be supporting Afisu Collins and looking forward to catching up with him this afternoon. Um, that will be implicit by the fact that he is a Labour-endorsed uh, uh, candidate. And in, and in our minds, you know, he's a candidate that can really continue the significant investment that's been going on into regional economic development, public transport, and I think can bring together Auckland. Well, we know that international factors are having a significant impact on inflation in New Zealand, but relative to many other countries, we're seeing a lesser impact and we're seeing all of those other economic indicators really strong. Growth continues to be strong, unemployment at historic lows, 
our debt uh, is also low, particularly relative to others, and that puts us in a really strong position. And what lessons can political parties and governments learn from the extreme reaction to the British government's mm. tax cuts and, and that kind of thing? Yeah, and, and Labour has held a very strong view that in these economic times, it is not the time to see uh, tax cuts uh, for those on the top tax bracket or those in, in wealthiest New Zealanders. Uh, it is time instead to make sure that we're shoring up our economy, making sure that growth is strong, unemployment is low and debt is low. Borrowing for things like tax cuts is not the solution that New Zealand needs right now. And this is where we've been focused on targeted solutions to support New Zealanders through what has been a tough time globally, but here at home. The cost of living payment, of which you've seen the third instalment this week, half price public transport, reducing the cost of fuel at the pump through to January. Those are all targeted ways that we can help households without making inflation worse or putting ourselves in a position to borrow uh, increasing debt uh, as the National Party has proposed. Uh, no, I'm not aware of that particular um, instance, but of course uh, we're worried about any circumstance where you see violence being used, particularly against young people. We have seen um, some particular issues in uh, Auckland and in some cases in the Waikato as well. So where you've seen the police uh, taking a very strong approach particularly helped by the fact that we've got the largest number of police officers that we've ever had to make sure we're preventing these acts of violence. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, hey, how's it going?